What's going on everybody? Kyle. Amy. Back again from Flare 2.8 Media for another video. Today we're going to be showing you guys what's in our camera bag. Just so you guys can get an idea of what we use on a day-to-day -day basis. Alright, let's hop into it. Intro. All right, so to start, we're gonna run you guys through the, the cameras that each of us use. So that would be this big old thing right here. Now you might be saying, oh, it looks like a 1DX Mark II. Not a 1DX Mark II, Canon EOS RP. Why did I choose the Canon EOS RP? Full frame camera, relatively cheap. All right, so I'm gonna jump into some of the accessories and whatnot that I use um, and, and the overall setup that we use on this camera to get the best results out of it. So to start, it is the Canon EOS RP. It's a great full frame entry level camera. Um, not the greatest camera spec wise, it has its issues, but you can get around it with some of the accessories that we use. So what I have on here is the uh, EF EOS R mount adapter. So just the basic level one, uh, no control ring on this. We, we use EF lenses because they're cheaper than the RF lenses um, and they're more versatile because we can use it on both of our cameras. So for this uh, camera, we use the 24 to 70 f2.8 EF mount lens. So this is the first edition of it. So it's got the kind of weird reverse. This is 24 mil, 70 mil is up close. It's really weird. I'm not a huge fan of the way that that works, but it gives me a constant f2.8 zoom lens that is very versatile, goes from wide to uh, portrait and overall just a great lens. So as always keeping just a little uh, UV filter on there for protection, uh, 77 millimeter, but this is a great lens that I've really enjoyed using. It's still got fast autofocus because of the technology in the RP. Um, and I really have no complaints with using this setup. And so one of the other things that really irks people about the EOS RP is the battery life. So what I did is I went out and got the battery grip to go with it. So this is the newer battery grip. Um, and for all these pieces that we use, we'll throw links down in the description for you guys to check out. So got the newer battery grip on here. This allows me to put two of the LPE 17 batteries, which solves most of the battery issues. It still eats battery because it's those small LPE 17 batteries, which are more fit for something like the Canon M50 than they are a full frame camera. But so far I haven't had any issues with this grip and I'm, I've been really happy with it. So definitely would recommend that uh, if you have the EOS RP. And now we're gonna jump into the camera that Amy uses on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, I use the Canon M50. As a newer photographer, I thought it was a great price point for all of the features. Um, it's very versatile for both photo and video. I got it for around $600. So let's go through how I have this baby set up on a daily basis. So the first thing I'm gonna talk about is my mount adapter. I have the Canon EF EOS M mount adapter on my camera. And the lens that I use is the Canon EFS 17-55 to f2.8. Um, this setup is not as intricate as Kyle's is, but I think it works really well for me and I really like the way it fits in my hand. We aren't some of those photographers that like to carry around five, six, seven lenses for everything that we do. So that's why we chose these two very versatile lenses that have great aperture ranges as well. So each one of our lenses goes down to f2.8, which is something that you're gonna need if you wanna shoot in low light. It also gives you much more versatility in terms of being able to actually, you know, capture a variety of shots. Um, so really the two lenses that we use don't leave our cameras very often. So that's something to consider. And we're gonna do a, another video at a later date on how to choose lenses that best fit the, the types of work that you're doing. Uh, so keep an eye out for that one, but there, it is a very specific reason why we chose those two lenses. They're great at uh, giving you a range of focal lengths. So you're not limited to prime lenses. You get those great apertures without having to sacrifice the ability to zoom and it's constant. So you're at a constant F2.8, whether you're at 24 or you're at 70 or whether you're at 17 or whether you're at 55 uh, for the two cameras. Um, so that's, that's something that we, you know, really looked for when we were going in to choose those lenses. Um, but the only other one that we keep in the bag is the classic Nifty 50. 
So this is something that everybody should have in their camera bag. This drops all the way down to f1.8. So if we're really trying to shoot in low light or if we really want a very shallow depth of field, we'll pull this bad boy out. But for the most part, this thing ends up just kind of sitting there and staying in the bag. We don't use it all that often uh, because our focal ranges cover what this covers. So the really time that we need it is to drop down to that extra shallow depth of field or to get even a little bit more light in. But for the most part, this guy stays in the bag and we try and keep a minimalist approach. I have a telephoto lens back there, but I really don't take it out very often. I use it for detail shots in product photography, but that isn't you know a constant f2.8. It only drops down to f4.5. So it's not super versatile. It's great for going out and shooting nature whenever we decide to do that. But otherwise I don't really bring that, cam that lens into the camera bag very often. All right, so now let's jump into some of the other accessories that we keep in our bag. So the next thing we're going to go over with you guys is the two microphones that we keep in our bags for each one of our cameras. So these microphones are really budget friendly, nothing super crazy or expensive. Um, we just noticed that we really need some microphones for our cameras because if you're not using a microphone, you will realize that your sound quality isn't very great. So the first microphone that I'm going to go over with you guys is the Comica CVM V30 Lite shotgun mic. And the mic that we're talking into right now is the Tackstar SGC 598 shotgun mic. So both of these mics that we got are less than $40. They're not pro mics by any means, but they're way better sound quality than your in-camera mic and we'll get you started. All right, so the next thing we're gonna jump into is some of these smaller accessories that we keep in our bags that are really useful to have and stuff that you should always be keeping around. Um, so the first thing I want to go over is this guy. And if you shoot video and you don't have one of these guys, you need to get one. So this is a variable ND filter from KNF Concept. It covers NDs 2 through ND32. Um, these things can get really expensive. This isn't necessarily the most professional model, but it still does a really good job um, when you're outside. And if you don't know why you need one of these, uh, if you're shooting video, you need to keep your shutter speed if you want realistic motion blur, which you can break the rules stylistically if you so choose, but you want your shutter to be 180 degrees, which basically means it has to be twice your frame rate. So in order to keep that outside, if you're gonna shoot at f2.8, you want that shallow depth of field, you're gonna need an ND filter to be able to still expose correctly um, and shoot at that shutter speed. So one thing that you can do to save a little bit of money on these is buy step up rings. So we bought an 82 millimeter while both of our lenses are 77. Uh, so you just get a step up ring and that allows you so that you can put this on any lens. So even if you have ones that are smaller at 67, you can get step up rings all the way from 67 to 82 and you can still use this for all of them. So that's kind of a, a budget friendly way to do it. You only need to buy one and then you buy the step up rings to make sure it fits all of your lenses. All right, so the next thing we're gonna go over with you guys is our hard case camera bag organizer. You really need one of these things because you don't want all the little things flying all over your camera bag and getting lost. All right, so these things are super useful. We chose this one because it has a bunch of little compartments so we can separate and compartmentalize all the little pieces and random things that you need when you're doing this type of work. Uh, so in the first section, we have all of our cords. So that includes charger cords, SSD connection cables, phone chargers, all the random cables that you're gonna to need to be able to connect to things. We also keep lens cloths and our spare SD cards in there. So this next section, we have our two extra batteries for the RP and the M50, as well as a Bluetooth remote trigger. On the next side, we have a 120 gigabyte SSD. And then finally, in the back section, we just keep a bunch of random things. Right now, there's just camera straps in there, but it's a nice big pocket where we can keep um, some other random things that we may or may not need. Depending on what we're doing, we're gonna need a tripod of some sort. For the most part, we end up using a little gorilla pod. Um, the, the gorilla pod's a really versatile thing because we, we tend to use it to vlog most of the time, but you can also set it down if you wanna do some other uh, little B-roll sequences or you need a little bit of stabilization. Um, if we know we're gonna be shooting landscapes, we'll bring obviously a real tripod, but it's not something that we keep in our camera bag on a day-to-day -day basis because we're more run and gun style shooters anyway. Um, so the, the piece on here that you might be noticing I'll bring it a little closer. It's not gonna focus, but. Um, 
So the piece on here that you might be noticing that's not normal for the, the Gorilla Pod is this guy on top. So I really wanted to take a second to talk about these little guys. These are little quick release plates that I keep on really all of my, my tripods, my Gorilla Pod, my gimbal, all these little things. I found these on Amazon for about 17 bucks a piece and they come with a 323 style Manfrotto plate, with it, which is a pretty universal plate. But if you just get these plates and enough of them, you have them on every single piece that you're gonna need uh, when you're going back and forth between your tripod, between your gimbal, back to the Gorilla Pod. It makes it really easy so you can keep one of these plates on your camera at all time, and then you can have these on all the places where you're gonna connect it to. Uh, so I really love these little things. They're super nice, super convenient, um, and I highly recommend getting a bunch of these just because you never wanna run out of tripod plates and you always wanna be able to move quickly, especially if you're on a client shoot, back and forth between tripod to gimbal, the tripod to gimbal, so on and so forth. Um, so these things are really cool. I always keep one on my Gorilla Pod, um, and yeah. That's a real pun. So the next thing that we are gonna talk about is the actual bag itself. So the bag that we have is the large size Caden bag found on Amazon. I think it runs for around $40. We love this bag because it has a bunch of adjustable um, lens slots that are versatile and keeps everything really organized for us. It's also large enough to actually fit the laptop and any other little accessories we might need. And finally, this isn't necessarily a camera accessory, but it's something that you need to have, you know, around. And especially if you're traveling or you're going to be out all day and you want to back up your footage is a laptop of, of some sort. So we use a 13 inch MacBook Pro. That's the, the main computer that I use for all my editing. Amy has a Surface Pro that she uses. But in order to be able to download backup footage, all that jazz, I keep that around. Um, you know, if, if I know I'm going to be coming back, I know I'm not going to fill up my SD cards, I'll leave it at home. I don't always carry it around in my bag, but it's something that, you know, often enough comes with me that I felt like it should be included in this video. So in addition to the, Mac, the 13 inch MacBook Pro, we also have some accessories such as the Magic Mouse, an Aki USB-C hub for the MacBook Pro because, you know, Apple. Um, so this is a really useful little piece. This has the SD card reader that we need. It can even go down to micro SD. Uh, it has a bunch of USB ports, USB-C, and it can also be used as a charger. It can connect to external displays. So because again, Apple, you're gonna need one of those, but super useful. That thing was only like 50 bucks. So really helpful and I'm able to then connect it at home to my 4K 32 inch monitor that I use for editing. So it's, it's a really useful little piece that you're gonna need. And finally, the MacBook charger and cord. So that wraps up our video of what we keep in our camera bag. A couple of key takeaways from this video are we take a very minimalistic approach. We like to have a bag that we can have everything we need into one. Yeah, so this bag and our minimalistic approach allows both of us to fit all the gear that we need into one bag. And that keeps us pretty light and allows us to kind of move around the way that we want to. So that's something that we took into consideration all the way down to the very small pieces that we keep in that bag. We don't keep 15 different types of filters in there. We want to take a pretty minimalistic approach to it. Um, so that's something to consider it is that, especially for those of you we're guilty of it too, that spends too much time scrolling through gear, like, oh, I could use this for that <laughs> one particular scenario. You don't need all that. You, if you take the more minimal, minimalistic approach, you'll find that you actually create more and spend less time scrolling through gear. So that was the first takeaway that we wanted to leave you guys with. The second is that this isn't all of our gear. This just happens to be the gear that we use most often and use on a day-to-day -day basis and that we would take with us when we wanted to go out and do some sort of run and gun pro uh, product photography shoot or so on and so forth. If we're going to a client shoot where we have a, a location, we're bringing lights, we're bringing all kinds of other stuff. So this is just sort of the what we keep in our day-to-day -day camera bag, um, but we do own a lot more gear than that. So, you know, take our minimalistic approach with a grain of salt, if you will, and we have a lot more stuff sitting in a closet over there. So. Yes, we, we have a lot of stuff sitting in that closet. So, you know, this is definitely a game that you got to play and you're going to need a lot of gear, but don't let that weigh you down on a day-to-day -day basis, pun intended. Um, but yeah, that's the gear that we use on a day-to-day -day basis, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.